Let's go. Episode 612, Soul Not For Sale podcast. We got Tucker Carlson, Tulsi Gabbard, and I just went down a little thought rabbit hole as I'm listening to Tulsi Gabbard question Tucker Carlson about wanting to join the CIA before he got into journalism. Very interesting. Very interesting information to find out. And you know what it makes me think about? You know, as I am doing this research on the rock stars of Laurel Canyon and, you know, of the mid 60s and 70s and hip hop in the mid 80s and 90s, you know, switching over to gangster rap and influencing the young urban community. As I look into all that and realizing that the rock stars of the 60s and 70s influenced the anti-war movement and the hip-hop stars of the 80s, 90s, and even late 90s to 2000s influenced the young urban population to kind of calm down on the whole anti-establishment thing and kind of just run wild amongst themselves, you know? As I start seeing that, that's what music did, makes me wonder, especially hearing this little bit of information, how deep does this whole thing go? How deep do these operatives, these agents get, right? They're in music. Are they in media as well? How deep does it go? Could it be someone like Tucker Carlson? You know, people always speculate about Rogan, Rogan over here, being in the CIA, making faces like that on social media, but in the CIA at the same time. I don't know about that. But it makes you wonder, how deep could all this this uh, secretiveness, this deep statedness, these agents be? I don't know. And how deep are they today? You know? I don't know. I'm going to come up with some examples as we uh, after we listen to this clip, but let's listen to Tucker Carlson's reasoning on wanting to join the CIA, and uh, let's figure out if that actually happened. <laughs> Before I do, you know I got to bring you to the store. This is IamCoachColin.com, where you can get the best anti-establishment gear in the world. First off, we have the certified pure blood shirt for those of you that survived the pandemic, unscathed and untainted, strong-willed, keep pushing in the free world. Do not submit. And we also have the public enemy number one shirt. Please Google the World Economic Forum and its founder, and you'll understand quickly why this shirt says public enemy number one with that face on it. And we have the bold statement, of course, soul not for sale because it is a war between good and evil and your soul is the prize. Please hold on to it. And we have the shirt heard round the world. The mugshot heard round the world. Trump 2024, the presidential mugshot, as I like to call it. All of that's available on IamCoachColin.com. And if you want 10% off of anything you just saw, all you have to do is put in the discount code IamCoachColin, all capital letters, all one word, one L in the name, Colin, and that gets you 10% off on us. And if you've done that with us already, thank you so much. We appreciate it so much. You're much appreciated. Now let's get into this clip. You, um, is it true before you got into journalism, you were thinking about joining the, the CIA? No. <laughs> yes. I, I, I actually just, I read that somewhere recently. I, I didn't, I didn't know that. What, oh, yeah. what was, what was, what was your interest? What, what drove that? Well, that's the world that I lived in. I mean, we lived in Georgetown mm-hmm. and this was, uh, obviously it was 10 years before 9-11. It was 11 years, 1990. And there were a ton of former CIA officers in our neighborhood My father worked for the government and, you know, there are a lot of them in that world. And CIA officers, from my perspective as a child, were like kind of dashing, physically brave intellectuals. You know, some guy who'd studied classics at Yale who wound up in Beirut as station chief. You know what I mean? Leading this interesting life. And I wanted an interesting life. That's the that's the main thing that I wanted out of life. I never was interested in money. Um, I had the privilege of not being interested in money because I, I didn't grow up in a family where we were worried about money. So I just never really thought about money. But I but I wanted an interesting life. I didn't want a boring life. And so I wanted, I was like, oh, CIA, they send you to foreign countries as a case officer and you do vaguely patriotic things. And I was patriotic and I thought that would be great. And I yeah. didn't I didn't think the CIA was a sinister force. It never occurred to me the CIA might be playing a role in domestic politics. Like that was insane. First right. of all, it's illegal. 
Now CIA is all over domestic politics and they, they clearly took out Joe Kent in Washington state. I, you know, hmm. I think, and, and a lot of other ways that they are tampering with our democracy. But at the time that was not the view. So that was not my view anyway. Maybe Philip G thought that, but I didn't. So I took a series of assessment tests. Um, and ultimately they discovered through those tests what was true, which is I was completely unsuited. <laughs> totally unsuited for the job. I mean, <laughs> I, there's nothing about my personality that would make a good case officer. I I can't keep a secret. I'm, I never can't stop talking. I hate authority. I hate all bureaucratic institutions. Uh, right. I cannot take instructions. I'm a little bit insane. Like everything about me screamed, don't hire this guy. And, <laughs> and they thankfully didn't. And so I was getting married and my father-in-law was like, you can't correctly. He was like, you can't marry my daughter unless you have a job. And uh, I was 22. And uh, my dad's like, you know, I, I didn't graduate high school and I went into journalism and, and, and he was very successful in journalism. So he's like, they don't care. And I had not done well in school at all. I didn't have a college diploma. So they were like, he's like, just go into journalism. Mm. Okay. <laughs> so I did. Wow. <laughs> what, 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 a, what, like a, can you imagine just what would a different path your life would have taken? Like oh, and I would have been different. terrible at completely it. I would different. have been terrible. <laughs> I tell my own kids the most important factor in happiness professionally is finding a job that matches who you are. Yeah. Who natively are. Like, we're always like, well, you know, you need to, like, work at this and you'll get better. And that's true. But you cannot make up for inherent deficiencies. Like, mm. some things you're just not good at. Like, I'm very dyslexic. I can't do math. Can't parallel park. Okay, fine. So I'm not going to get a parallel parking job or become an accountant. I just, right. it would, I wouldn't work. And yeah. so do what you're naturally good at. And yeah. being a case officer and the operations director at the CIA would have been, I, mean, <laughs> can't even, I would have loved the adventure. I would love sure. living in Tunis, you know, but I, I wouldn't have been good at it at all. Oh man. Somebody should make a movie about that alternate life, like a Tucker Carlson CIA <laughs> operative in, uh, in some foreign land. That would be a, a really I interesting know. movie. I been think. One of the worst spy ever. <laughs> Worst spy ever or best spy ever, huh? Who knows? And you know what? When I talk about how deep it all goes, it makes me just wonder, like, how many of these news people, because, like, you know, Tucker Carlson himself has talked about these agencies having a grip, control of certain reporters, you know, having, a con having control of certain news outlets, you know, those people who are in front of those screens and mainstream media are taking their talking points from these agencies. It just makes you wonder how deep does it go? You know, like, could he be, could this man be in the CIA right now? And we just don't know it. And he's climbing the ranks. And in 2028, they're going to have their first fully installed president. And we're just like, whoa, we just had no idea. You know, just loving him the whole way through. Not really the whole way through. I mean, there was a period where a lot of people didn't like him, but that's changed quite a bit, you know? Just makes you wonder. Like, imagine, imagine this. Imagine right now the CIA is in the middle of a cold civil war where these, these guys, these Rogans, these Brands, these Tuckers, they're all in it, but they've, they've moved away from it. They've decided we're breaking free from your grip. We're not going, we're instead, we know what's going on and we're going to speak the truth and we're going to sway public opinion to despise your organization. You know, like imagine that's going on right now and they're just combating each other slowly. And every time you see somebody go through a cancellation process, that's really just some, some bombs getting thrown their way. That's really just an assault on them. It's like we're trying to take down this operative who's gone rogue and let's just hit him with everything we possibly can from the me too's to the to the, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll make him a criminal. We'll make him make him racist. We'll make him misogynistic. You know, those are all just all just missiles that they throw at somebody. Get them, get them. Try to knock him down as quickly as possible because he's gone rogue from the organization. It really makes you think. Like, look at that. He could be in the CIA. I don't know. <laughs> I'm really starting to think about that. Like, imagine, you know, operative Ro operative Rogan has gone has gone missing. Like, where is he? What's he doing? Why isn't he reporting back to us? He refuses to. He got a hundred million dollars from Spotify, and now he's not speaking to any of us. He refuses to. 
Tucker Carlson, same thing. He's made millions of dollars. He, doesn't, he won't speak to us anymore. He won't give us any money, nothing. You know? And the CIA, the guys in the CIA are just like, who do we have left? We need to combat these people. Fight fire with fire. Who do we have left? They're like, uh, we have Rachel Maddow and Anderson Cooper. <laughs> They're like, God damn it. That's all we have left? Do we even have Don Lemon anymore? No. He went rogue as well, but nobody cared. <laughs> nobody cared when he went rogue. All we have is Rachel Maddow. God damn it. You know? They're just trying to round up all these operatives they have out. Yeah, and, and then when you think about how deep it goes, it's like, does it go as deep as YouTube? You know, I can go to myself. Like, am I in the CIA? Is someone like is someone like me who has a channel like that does this stuff? Like breaking points, you know, like Crystal Ball and the Sagar. Are they in it? You know, the Daily Wire, you know, like how deep does it go? Or maybe it goes even deeper and crazier than that, because those are like the well to do people on YouTube. Like, what if it's like, you know, PewDiePie? You know, some of you guys don't even probably know who that is, but like the gamers, streamers. Could they be a part of something like that? Because it's not out of the question. I mean, if you're saying Jim Morrison was a part of certain dealings with agencies, well, then why wouldn't it be some long-haired streamer, you know, that just plays video games all day? Why wouldn't it? You know, Joe Rogan was a guy that does DMT, and like, and people suspect him of that. He's a comedian that does DMT and, and used to kick really hard, and that's what he was known for. Comedy and kicking real hard and doing DMT. I don't know. Who knows? It just makes you think. Are these are these women who are on OnlyFans? Are they a part of it? Right? Because they're helping they're helping erode society in their own way. They're making people more suggestible. They're making people a little more agreeable because they're like dulling down their senses. You know, they're whittling away at men who wanna who would otherwise want to be involved in a nuclear family. And be present husbands and fathers. They're driving a wedge in their own way. Why couldn't it be them as well? Like, I wonder how deep it all goes. Man, it just makes me wonder. <laughs> but, uh, but, but think about that. I'm really partial to that idea. Like the CIA being in a cold civil war right now. In, in and of itself. And the agents are battling other agents. And these undercover operatives are battling other, un other undercover operatives. And they're just trying to just maintain some kind of control in and of itself. And that's why we and that's the real reason why we see the world going wild right now. Everything's upside down because they can't use actual bombs and guns and, and ammunition. They have to do it through psychological warfare. They have to do it through, you know, right now you have the public opinion, but we will sway it away from you. And when we do, you're going to fall apart and you're going to have to either come back to us or you're going to have to just get out of the way. I don't know. I don't know. It really, it really, really makes me wonder. Tucker Carlson, CIA agent. Imagine, imagine. Look at this face. He's 007. <laughs> or look at this face. I'm 007. What? Can you imagine? Oh, so mad. They made 007 black. Come on. They made him black when he wears a little hat. <laughs> Man, but uh, if you haven't liked the video already, like the video. If you haven't subscribed already, subscribe. We're making one to three videos a day. It's hard to keep up unless you hit that notification bell. And other than that, I am out. Be aware of everything. I don't know. I don't know who to trust. Do you know who to trust? I don't know. Ha, ha, ha.